We're not all the same. We have feelings, you know, we have struggles, we have dreams. Right now, we're so unapologetic. And I personally, as an Asian American, bisexual female immigrant, you know, I feel limitless. There's so many things that I represent and I just want to be loud and proud about it. And I, I will not rest until my community feels seen. I remember when we first moved into the apartment complex that we lived in for many years, my mother and I walked from building to building, looking at names that were next to buzzers for apartments and buzzing everyone's name that sounded like it was a South Asian name. Just so we could talk to people who felt familiar to us, who we could feel comfortable sharing our experience of immigrating to America with. April 75, the Khmer Rouge take over and I, I make decision, I'm not going back there. If I go there, I'm going to die. The American troops come over here, they, they said, you want to go to Cambodia, we take you to the border. You want to go to the United States, we take to the United States. And I make my decision, hard decision, come to the United States. was as horrible a day as the days that the bomb fell on Pearl Harbor on December 7th. I just was so heartbroken to see all this hate come out. We were sent to camp because of hate. They needed places where they could house a lot of people. They used these horse stalls. We didn't have mattresses. We slept on cots, and they, we had to stuff straw and hay in these bags, and that's what we slept on. And a couple of months later, a truck pulled into the parking lot and it had mattresses, and we went crazy. The attacks on the Asian community bring back the, the past, of kind of the threats we've experienced. When we first moved out to where our current location, this was 1975, we received anonymous phone calls. Remember Pearl Harbor? And we had eggs thrown at our garage door. People that don't understand and don't take the time to understand who we are come and attack us and take our people away. That could have been easily my own family and that's like what scares me and makes me so upset. From my experience, it's always been there. This feeling of not really trusting the environment altogether, not feeling 100% comfortable. My best friend Christine and I were in the car about to make a, a right turn and these two non-Asian girls next to us in the car are doing this, the slanted eye thing. And this was like 2012, you know? And we were just so shook. First of all, my best friend Christine has beautiful big eyes. Like her eyes are bigger than those girls' eyes. And like, they were just doing the slanty eye thing and, and we did nothing to provoke it, you know? We were just there, existing. I check in with my mom a lot because as an Asian immigrant woman, I feel like she can never really breathe easy. So I was with my mom. I'm around 11, 12, I'm a kid. We go down the stairs to catch the subway. She goes to the booth to buy Metro cards, right? She's talking to the guy. She can't understand what he's saying. He starts mocking her, like talking to her very slowly, like this. Do you under, and you know, he's like really being very condescending. Just instinctually, I just like hit the glass. Cause I felt so angry. Some kids chased us home yelling, you dirty Japs, get out of town, go back to Japan. And I was so shocked. I've never been talked to like that before. I was made fun of for the food I brought to school. Having a little case of rice and spam and People would say often, what does that smell? That's gross, and made me feel disgusting. Growing up, I wanted so bad to be white. I wanted so bad to have blonde hair and blue eyes. That's the time that I obsessed with how can I change myself from being Asian to being white. I was adopted when I was two. I am Asian American. 
but have white parents, I don't know exactly where I fall in the conversation. I think I'm still kind of working through those emotions. I actually haven't talked to my mom about anything that happened this week, mainly because, like, she should be asking me how I feel. The teacher couldn't pronounce my name, and I hated my name. It's, you know, Masao Yamashita. So you spend the, the next 15 years or so trying to become more Americanized. When I'm out here, it's constant. What are you, you know, Hispanic, are you Persian? Nothing makes me more angry than when they tell me that I'm not Hawaiian, Chinese, Japanese. It's like they all have this predisposed idea of what an Asian should look like. I think as like a gay Asian man, I've faced that a lot within the, the gay community. There's a saying that's like well known. It's uh, no fats, no femmes, no Asians. And that just kind of gets at you when you see that and hear that all the time, especially within a group of people that you feel like you belong to. I really enjoyed growing up in Georgia. There are times I don't feel Asian enough, and there are times where I don't feel Southern enough. When I started growing my business and I started doing events and meeting people, the number of Asian American women that came up to me and said that seeing me do a creative job made them realize they didn't have to stay and whatever it was that they did because it was going to make their parents happy, that is when I realized that I was extra proud to be Asian American. When Congress passed the Immigration Act, we were very proud to be Japanese Americans. I'm proud because when after I got married, and I have two kids, and I raised my kid in this country to better life, better education from more than I did. And I promise that now I do it. All my kids get a good job, good family. Right now, I have two beautiful, beautiful grandkids. There are stories there that I think are so important that will eventually get watered down with each generation. My kids will not know that same story that I know from my parents and on and on, but to keep those stories coming and to keep those stories alive because those future generations wouldn't be here without the parents who immigrated to this country for a better life. Plenty of Asian Americans are um, outspoken and very outgoing, and that's me. I love acting and telling meaningful stories um, because I think that's really important for Asian Americans to have our voice be heard. So I think it's important that we continue to expand representation and tell more Asian American stories. It, it is cool to see how strong our community has become, right? The resilience and just the strength. I get goosebumps just thinking about it because it wasn't always like this, you know, because society has trained us to believe that you know, we should just be grateful and, and shut up and be happy to be here. These stories, hopefully should surprise a lot of people. And surprise is an underrated emotion. And surprise ought to lead to curiosity. And I would hope that people will be much more curious about what's inside an Asian American person's mind and heart and really what value they can bring to any circumstance. For me, telling my story means that I can begin to heal. I think when we grieve together and when we celebrate together, we become stronger. I hope that the generations to come will remember our stories so that we don't repeat it again. We need to speak up when hate is being shown. I think it's also important for us to put our stories into the broader context of racial injustice in America, of the history of this country. Because not only do we claim our place in this history, but I think we are also able to understand what is our role in addressing those injustices and to stepping up to the plate, not just to tell our own stories, but to make this country into a better place for everyone, all of its residents.